In the heart of Houston, Texas, a sinister tale unfolded behind the doors of a seemingly innocent candy store. A place that should have been a haven of sweetness and joy, instead harbored a chilling secret. This was the domain of a man named Dean Coral, a candy store owner who was anything but the jovial, friendly figure that one might expect. Behind Coral's friendly facade lay a malevolent force, a dark side that would come to horrify a community and shock the nation. Known later as the Candy Man Killer, Coral was a predator of the most insidious kind. His prey were not the sugary confections he peddled, but the young, vulnerable souls who frequented his store. Between the years of 1968 and 1973, Coral committed unthinkable acts of evil. His victims were numerous, with 28 young lives snuffed out prematurely, their innocence cruelly stolen by a man they trusted. For five long years, Coral plied his deadly trade, his crimes hidden behind the saccharine sweet exterior of his candy store. Each act was a perversion of trust, a betrayal of the innocent friendship between a child and the candy man. And while we will not delve into the graphic details of his crimes, it is enough to say that each act was more monstrous than the last, a testament to the twisted nature of a man who could turn a symbol of childhood joy into a tool of darkness. The Candyman Killer was not a monster from a horror movie, but a real-life figure who walked among us. His deeds a chilling reminder of the capacity for evil that can lurk in the most unexpected places. His candy store, once a beacon of happiness for the children of Houston, became a house of horrors that would forever taint the memory of a once-cherished institution. This is the story of Dean Coral, the Candyman Killer. A tale of shocking depravity, of innocence betrayed, and a community left reeling by the revelation of the evil that had lived in their midst. Between 1970 and 1973, Coral preyed on the innocence of youth, leaving a trail of tragedy in his wake. He targeted boys, primarily in their early teens, a time of life marked by vulnerability and the search for identity. Each victim was unique, yet they all shared something in common. They were drawn into Coral's orbit by the promise of friendship and understanding. As the owner of a candy factory, Coral had an easy way to entice these youths. He was a familiar face in the neighborhood, known for his generosity and seemingly kind-hearted nature. His candy store was a place of joy for many children, a safe haven where they could indulge in sweet delights. But behind the colorful facade, a sinister trap was being laid. Coral's method was calculated and cruel. He used his charismatic charm and the allure of his candy store to lure unsuspecting boys into his web. Once they were within his grasp, the true horror of his intentions would unfold. Without dwelling on gruesome specifics, let's just say that Coral's acts were deeply shocking and profoundly disturbing. His victims were subjected to unimaginable torment, their youthful innocence exploited in the most horrific of ways. The sheer brutality of his actions defies comprehension, a chilling reminder of the depths to which human cruelty can descend. It's important to remember that these were not just victims, they were children. They had dreams, aspirations, and families who loved them. They were sons, brothers, and friends, each with a unique story and a life full of potential. Their trust was betrayed, their futures stolen, their lives extinguished by a man they believed to be a friend. These innocent lives were tragically cut short at the hands of a man they trusted. As we delve deeper into this chilling tale, Let's keep in mind the true victims of this tragedy, the innocent boys whose lives were forever altered by the Candyman's heinous acts. Coral's reign of terror came to an end in 1973, but not before leaving a lasting scar on the community. In the heart of Houston, Texas, a manhunt like no other was underway. Law enforcement and the community joined forces, united by a shared goal to apprehend the Candyman killer. The investigation was intense, exhaustive, and fraught with uncertainty. Each clue, each lead, each piece of evidence was meticulously examined, the hope of justice for the victims fueling the relentless pursuit. In the midst of the investigation, detectives were led to Dean Coral's candy factory. It was here that the first major breakthrough occurred, a chilling realization that the seemingly innocuous candy store was the epicenter of Coral's gruesome deeds. This discovery sent shockwaves through the community and law enforcement alike, turning the candy man from a figure of childhood delight into a symbol of unthinkable horror. But it was not the evidence alone that led to Coral's capture. The community's role in bringing him to justice was pivotal. As news of the Candyman killer spread, citizens stepped forward, providing crucial information that helped piece together the horrifying puzzle. 
Their courage and determination were instrumental in shedding light on Coral's dark secrets. Finally, the day of reckoning arrived. Dean Coral, the Candyman killer, was unalived by Elmer Wayne Henley, marking the end of a terror-filled chapter in Houston's history. Henley was no saint. He was an accomplice turned victim who wanted to save himself and his friends. This selective grace did not fall on any of the other victims he lured to Coral, but led to the end of the Candyman killer. The hunt for the Candyman killer was over, but the impact of his crimes was only beginning to sink in. The aftermath of Coral's passing sent shockwaves through the community. The revelation of his heinous crimes was akin to a ticking time bomb that had finally detonated, leaving the community in a state of disbelief and terror. Their small, tight-knit community, once known for its hospitality and charm, was now grappling with the unimaginable. The trust they had in our neighbors, the safety they felt within their town, was shattered. Elmer Wayne Henley and David Owen Brooks were both tried for their roles in the murders. Henley was went to trial in San Antonio on July 1, 1974, charged with six murders between March 1972 and July 1973. Brooks went to trial on February 27, 1975. He was indicted for four murders between December 1970 and June 1973, but was brought to trial charged only with the June 1973 murder. Henley is serving a life sentence at the Mark Stiles Unit in Jefferson County near Beaumont, Texas. Parole applications from July 1980 have been denied. He is next eligible for parole in October 2025. Brooks was sentenced to life in prison at the Terrell Unit near Rosherin, Texas. He passed on May 28, 2020, at the age of 65. A sense of collective responsibility was born out of the tragedy, a shared commitment to heal and rebuild their community from the ashes. Yet the shadow of Coral's crimes has left lasting impacts. The community has become more vigilant, more aware of the dangers that could lurk within their midst. Parents have become more protective of their children, instilling in them a sense of caution without instigating fear. The local law enforcement, once seen as mere protectors, are now viewed as guardians, their role in the community reinforced by the aftermath of this tragedy. Coral's crimes did more than just take innocent lives. They shook the community to their core forcing us to question our sense of security and trust. They forced them to come together, to support and uplift each other in a time of unimaginable pain. And although the wounds have healed over time, the scars remain, a constant reminder of the horror that once struck their community. Coral's crimes forever altered the fabric of their community. But with resilience and unity, they continued to weave a new narrative, one of strength, vigilance, and enduring hope. In the face of such horror, it is the victims who should never be forgotten. The Candyman Killer's reign of terror claimed the lives of 28 young souls, their ages ranging from 9 to 20. Boys who should have been playing catch in the park, studying for tests, or simply enjoying the innocence of their youth. In the years following the gruesome discovery of the Candyman's atrocities, the city of Houston held numerous memorial services, vigils, and remembrances for these victims. Streets were lined with mourners, their candles flickering in the night, a beacon of unity and remembrance. The families of the victims, their grief unimaginable, found solace in the support of their neighbors, their city, their country. They found strength in unity, in the shared resolve to remember their sons, brothers, and friends, not as victims, but as the vibrant, full-of-life boys they once were. It is easy, in the retelling of such a dark chapter, to focus on the monster that was Dean Coral, but it is crucial that we shift our focus from the villain to the victims, to remember their names, their faces, their dreams. It is crucial that we remember the lives they lived, however short, instead of the gruesome way they were taken. So today let's take a moment to remember these boys, to honor their memory, to acknowledge their dreams, their potential, their lives cut too short. Let us remember them not for their tragic end, but for the life they lived and the joy they brought to those around them. Today, we remember the victims of the Candyman Killer. Their lives cut tragically short, but their memory living on in the heart of their community.